and of course some new encounters and monsters and things like that now this one's definitely different um, and the fact that you don't just get monsters in this one you get also like things that are way different than battles like for example you have this one called minecart madness and instead of being a regular encounter you're basically trying to um, go 100 miles an hour to your destination. It says the winner is the first place to reach the finish line of 100 points or is the last player left in the race. So if you have a value of 25 or more you flip a coin. If it's um, heads you are still in the race, tails you get thrown off and you lose 20 life points. If you have um, attack value of 50 or more you flip two coins and if one of them is tails you are out of the race and you um, take 20 life points. So it's not really a battle with the monster, it's more of a battle with um, the other players. Uh, here's another one that's kind of like that. It's called Arena of Souls. And what this essentially is, each of you guys get 120 life points and you're going to keep the damage stack next to your character. So you will attack other players directly. You choose your target when you reveal your attack card and you place it in front of that player and you damage them. Once someone reaches 120 life points, they will lose. Now, based on the number of players, if there are six players playing, the first person to go out is going to lose five prestige points. The second one that goes out is going to lose four until um, there's only one one person left standing. Now, the kicker is when you're out of the um, when you're out, you take damage, you take 10 damage, and you gain a minus one prestige token for each spirit remaining at the end of the round. I thought. Uh, now this is a nasty encounter, and it, or it could not be a kin encounter. It's based on greed. Um, you have a, 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 a Dejin of Wishes or Genie. Uh, each player palms a generic token or leaves their hand empty. Reveal simultaneously holding a token that shows you make a wish. If the number of wishing players is X or less, those players draw one relic card and this encounter ends with no prestige awarded. If not, all players lose 10 life points and all wishing players get minus one prestige. The dinge now must be fought. Prestige for the kill is equal to the number of wishes made. So, uh, if one to three players... So if there's one... You only allow one wish if there's three players, two if there's four players, three if there's five players, four if there's six players playing. It's always two less of, um, so if it all depends if you're greedy or not. Then there's this thing called the Rebeast. It says place two prestige on Rebeast for every player starting the game. When its LP reaches zero, the player dealing the final blow takes two prestige and then loses life equal to the leftover damage. And um, beyond that, needed to kill it. Basically, the loss cannot be rejected. Rebeast gains the LP equal to two times the leftover damage. Add from zero life points. The rest of the set attacks in the round are played in order. Allowing Rebeast to be killed more than once per round. Taking its last prestige ends the encounter and, and nets any bonuses. Alright. Um, now I'm going to explain what you get in this box. You get... Uh, 13 new main deck cards, 23 treasure cards, 6 hold and strike cards which are basically used for reputation cards that you get in the game, 12 two sided character cards, basically you know each character is new they have two sides to them, you get 7 event cards, new ones, 2 proxy cards which are used for a reputation I think, I'm sorry, six hold and strike cards I believe are for an encounter in the game, sorry. Uh, 34 reputa uh, reputation cards, 11 relic cards, and one mega sheet of tokens, 
for all the new monsters and stuff. And then of course you get a box that puts everything in here in a nice little spot. Um, I got my stuff sleeves so it doesn't um, fit 100%. And it's got spots for everything to put your um, stuff in. I got all the tokens in here. They're in baggies. Everything fits in here nicely. Nothing's exactly falling out or anything. Other than the fact that I got things in here loosely because I'm sleeping them, but can't really complain too much. Because everything is nice and neat in this box. So I give this um, expansion from Cutthroat Caverns two big thumbs up. Uh, it's got a lot, adds a lot of replayability to the game. So even if you don't have all the expansions for the game, um, if you do ever do plan on getting them, this will be a um, nice place to keep all your stuff. It's, it's basically a, an answer to every fan of the games from stuff they wanted from day one. So I may not have asked for this, some of the stuff in here, but I can honestly say that now that I have the stuff here, this is going to add a lot of replayability from when we play this game for many years to come. Because Cutthroat Caverns has been a favorite game of ours to bring out once in a while. We even like the mat, the modules and stuff. So, I mean, this game's just got a lot of stuff going for it. Now, some of you might not like this kind of game. Just because of the nature of the game. It's kind of like you, know, you work together to kill a monster, but only one person will get the initial, initial credit for it. But... That's what we like about this game. It's not like your typical work together game and then everyone wins. It's, it's kind of like you've got a balance between give and take. You, you, you do want to play rough, but you don't want to play too rough. Otherwise, you're going to hose yourself as well as others. It's kind of like got that pressure luck element to it. And uh, mess with your other players getting a game. Like, screw everybody over. But, I mean, the monsters do a great job doing that already. Especially all the new ones. We've only played once and we only we've seen a lot of the new ones and they're all really nice um, they, they're very very dangerous monsters so it's more or less you're not so much worried about hosing everybody else in this one as much when you're first trying to learn all these new monsters because they do a lot of nasty stuff so um, with that being said if you're a fan of cutthroat caverns by all means go out and get this uh, new expansion it's, it's fantastic um, if you're new to um, Cutthroat Caverns, I highly recommend getting the main box and getting this expansion. And then if you like that, you can then go back and start getting the other expansions. But this is a nice place to start outside of the main game because it's going to have everything you're going to need to keep everything organized together. So, once again, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time with another video.